You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Spencer Robson from the Toronto band Jow Day. Their new album, Nest of Veins, is out now. Make sure you go check it out. If you like instrumental progressive metal, it's pretty hard to beat, so trust me on this one. This is a really great band. Spencer, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Hey, thanks for having me. And you pronounced the name correctly. You, <laughs> you, you nailed it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against people trying different pronunciations, but you were just like right on it. Maybe that should be where I go to first is just this name, because I love this name, because when you type it mm-hmm. into Google or anything like that, there's only one result, and that's you guys. And that's that what's so genius a, about it. That's a really good point. I didn't really think about it like that. Rob's going to love that because he's... Uh, He's the guy that chose the name. It's um a bit of a Twin Peaks reference. It's kind of like the monster in the third season, and they kind of refer to it as as Judy. But David Lynch's character actually has a quote um where he mentions the creature's name as Joe Day. And actually, like we play that soundbite before we perform, just so that it's just sort of like, don't worry, like <laughs> this is this is what it is, everyone. So. So yeah. I've never actually watched that show. So it's like a big monster in the show. It's kind of like uh, something that's more spoken about than it is than it is seen. I also don't really want to give like too much of it away because like I feel like a lot of people really got to watch that uh, season. And honestly, I feel like a lot of people might argue with me about this. Um, but you you could oh, Rob might kill me if I say this, but like you you could jump into it without watching anything else i don't think you should but you 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 could because it's so strange i'm gonna go off on a tangent but it's so strange that like it's it's not as plot driven as a lot of other shows so you can still kind of get a lot out of it but anyway i digress comes from comes from twin peaks all right we got that out of the way that's how they got (laughs) their name (laughs) i'm glad i pronounced it right uh Mm -hmm. I want to get into the origins because I like this when I have like a one-on-one interview, I like to get a little more biographical. Mm -hmm. So did you Mm -hmm. grow up in Toronto? No, I grew up in uh, Brampton uh, and Rob grew up in uh, Vaughan and we both went to school at the University of Windsor and that's when we started playing music together and then I uh, was I was in the same program as him but I was a, a few years ahead so I graduated earlier and then a few years later we were both in Toronto at the same time we were like do you want to just kind of write some music and then we just came together with some riffs and smushed them together to make songs and then a sound kind of came out of it and then a few years later we started playing we were like oh this is fun let's make this more of a thing so it was it was actually like very casual how we did it it's been very slow over the course of several years but I think that's kind of what's made it appealing and really nice and were the drums your first instrument Um, piano was my first instrument, but I had the worst teacher. It was, I like, we would do like Mary had a little lamb version, like 48, uh, like in my fourth year. And I was like, I'm going to pull my eyes out of my head. And I begged my parents to quit. And they were like, you're going to regret this. But I was like, my teacher is so bad. And I still like kind of regret doing it, but man, it was, it was torture. But um, and then I, I did singing after that. I've been a, I've been a singer for a while and I picked up drums kind of late, actually, like in university, because uh, my parents didn't want to have like a loud kid in the house, which is pretty common. So I got my first one when I moved in with my buddies in uh, University of Windsor and just like played all the time because I just had wanted to play for so long. And I imagine the University of Windsor is pretty big, but you managed to find each other. Is this because you guys were the metalheads in in the school kind of a thing? Yeah, like pretty much. There's a former bassist in our band that's been one of my best friends like forever. Like we lived in the same house and we jammed for a long time. And then when we found out that Rob was um, in the school, we were like, oh, my God, do you play an instrument? He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll play bass. I'll play whatever. And so he started playing with us, just some kind of like generic metalcore stuff, but we'd play like house parties and shit like that. And and we're all close. We've all been friends for a long time. And Justin did vocals in that band, who's now the bass player for us. Um, and we've all played lots of different kinds of music. So it was just kind of natural. Like we have a good rapport because we've known each other for a long time. There isn't that kind of like relationship hiccup that you can kind of get in with like a new like creative partnerships so 
smooth and it, it's great we've again we've all been friends so it's it's uh i love it what bands would you say are like a common influence between you guys because i'm sure there's lots of bands that you listen to that you both agree on and then other ones that you kind yeah of... so which ones yeah, do no, you agree no, on totally oh, the ones that we agree on um are the contortionist we both what well, we all got into exoplanet at the same time and uh, when those guys came through Windsor, they stayed at uh, Justin's place a couple of times. Um, they're all really nice guys. Um, and then a lot of the standard ones, like if you do the Venn diagram of all of our musical tastes, like we all kind of land in like Contortionist, Mashuga, Gojira, like all the really like like the the go tos for like you know kind of groovy frog metal. And then I go more into like I guess like experimental like death metal and stuff like that and rob is a little bit more on like the the jazz side again we share some interests but just a generalization and then justin kind of like picks up on all of those different things too he likes a lot of like finger songwriter stuff um and we all kind of like i mean i keep saying smush it together that isn't really what we do i mean that's kind of like what we did at first and we were like i don't know let's write like a let's write like on a Casey stream breakdown and then, okay, well let's, let's write like an animals as leaders type section. And then it just kind of a sound kind of came out of that where like we started here and then we both kind of like Rob and I met like here to kind of create what you hear on the new album, which I think is a lot more cohesive, you know, but that's kind of like where it started. And so would you say like the writing process has changed a lot over the years? Oh yeah, for sure. Like we would show up just like, I've got this riff, I've got this riff. And then we would kind of like bang out a song, but especially during um, COVID, we would just share guitar pro tracks back and forth. And then we had lots of time before we jammed. So we would just be sort of sitting on these songs and thinking about them for a long time, which made the actual writing process of them once we got into the same room, like a lot faster. Um which was kind of a blessing in disguise. Like, you know, you want to get to it as soon as possible, but I think that time has really helped our music a lot. And in the future, I don't want to forget that because I think when you rush something, you're kind of like, you know, it's best when, when you feel good about every song instead of like, uh, that one kind of sounds good and we don't have time, let's keep it. And then a couple years later, you listen back, you're like, well, I don't like it because I never liked it. So we don't really have that problem with the songs now because there's been a lot of time. So, um, yeah, but sharing Guitar Pro tracks back and forth. Rob taught me how to use it because I don't play guitar, but I really wanted to write some songs. And he's very collaborative, so he taught me how to use it and um, was able to or like write a couple tracks on this record, uh, which, again, makes things, yeah, just easier, faster. It's good. And with sharing the ideas and like putting it aside and then like coming back to it later with fresh mm -hmm. ears, uh, do you think like the songwriting process is, is, is taking longer now than it did in the beginning? Just because you're kind of coming back to ideas and kind of. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think so. Uh, there's some riffs that, uh, like I came up with like seven years ago that I think I've finally figured out like how to maneuver it, you know, and then some songs uh, end up being a lot faster, but um, I think, uh, yeah, we've just written a lot over like, like online. And I never thought I'd be that kind of person because I like to be in the room and we finish songs in the room, but um, I kind of like being able to take it away and uh, take the time. And we've all got full-time jobs and there's like, there's no rush. So, uh, but we all want it to be high quality. So all of that combined means, you know, right. it's going to take some time. <laughs> <laughs> if there was two bands that got together and had a baby and that baby was Jow Day, then what were the two oh, bands man. that got together? I know it's kind of a hard two? question. Yeah, just that two. That is a really hard question. <laughs> There could be more. Um, we I've, could say like the two parents that got together and made two babies that got together. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I'd probably have to say Gojira because that was a huge obsession for Rob and I, especially when we were younger. And I can, even though I don't, I don't, um, I go to a lot other 
I use a lot of different influences now in my writing. I can always tell that I'm going for like that same kind of like feeling that I got when I heard like the heaviest matter in the universe for the first time, you know, that kind of like, Oh my God, this overwhelming, like heavy kind of, kind of vibey feeling. So I'd say Gojira and then I'd probably say the contortionist. Two yeah. that's two awesome bands. <laughs> so Yeah. Because the contortionists are great. They're like they're technical, but like they make sure that they can like they almost have like a post metal vibe to them sometimes, you know, like especially on Exoplanet. Like they'll let something like they'll let something stretch on if it feels right. And that's such like a hard thing to do. And I'm always trying to do something like that, kind of like Cult of Luna or, you know, a lot of those other bands that do it really well, like Neurosis or Amon Ra and stuff like that. So, yeah, mm-hmm. adding a little bit of that kind of like vibey post metal thing to like technical metal is like a really is something that I don't think we like as a band talk about, you know, like we, we don't try to do it, but it just ends up happening. And I'm kind of it's a happy result. I'm really glad about it. Having those kind of long, length, lengthier vibe sections, I, I, you do find mm-hmm. that in some of like Gojira's earlier, like on, I'm thinking mm-hmm. of The Link or from Mars to Sirius, there's certain sections where they do just yeah. kind of like sit on a riff for a long time and just kind of add some yeah. layers to it. And it's a really cool yeah. effect. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, When I think about it, that's really what I'm looking for. And it's hard because like if you write a song that's just that moment, then it gets boring. It's yeah. almost like you have to earn it. Like each each kind of like vibe that you're looking for, you have to earn it in some way. And it's like, how do you do that? It's a mystery every time you try to write a song. So yeah, but I guess that's what's fun about it. So So who comes up with the song names? Um, we both do. I I I uh I try to go with like the simpler vibier names and Rob likes the really cool, like technical names. So we kind of meet in the middle with that, like bog body, I think. Although I think that was the Rob, that was a Rob name. Um, But yeah, we both kind of uh, argue for a while and then we, (laughs) and then we decide on one, you know, creative arguing. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's still a democratic process in there too. That's, that's good. Yeah. (laughs) And if someone is like really, really, really passionate about something, it's like, well, if they're that passionate about it, then maybe we should roll with it. That's that's kind of, again, something that we've never really discussed because we haven't really had to because I find that our process is really easy. But say Rob will come to the table with like a riff or a song name that I'm just sort of like, this is crazy. I don't think this is going to work. And he's like, trust me. And then we try it. And I'm like, I really, really don't think I like it. He's like, no, 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 no trust me trust me this is it i'll be like okay we'll write the whole song and then usually he's right so you have to have that kind of you have to have that kind of trust you know just because i don't write in that direction doesn't mean it's not uh, a good song and that's it's i mean i'm saying it right now like it's easy but it's not you have to you have to have some some trust which we have that's good Another thing that has changed for you guys over the years is the artwork that you put on your Mm -hmm. releases. And you've done a lot of uh, uh, the art lately has been done by Ben Levin. And I was just kind of looking back. Did did Ben also do the artwork for, uh, I'm going to try to say this, Porco Cane? (laughs) Yeah, he did. He did, yeah. Okay. He did it for that. He's also done, uh, I mean, I I, uh, reached out to him because he did that Car Bomb music video for... uh, Oh, what the fuck's it called? The first one off of um, uh, Meta, I think. Oh. Anyway, it's 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 nuts. And I was like, oh my god, I love I love this kind of like glitchy, um, you know, three D style. And he was really chill. He was really easy to work with. And um, yeah, turned out great. The artwork turned out great. So for with a nest of veins, what sort of uh, prompts did you give him? Yeah, what did we say? I think we were trying to give him the idea of like some kind of person or creature trying to just as a general image, like trying to escape being wrapped up in something. And then on the more thematic side, it was like, well, you know, the music is technical, but we also want a very raw feeling. So we want the veins to actually look like veins instead of like this kind of clinical um clean kind of like wrapping so it was stuff like that like we started with an uh a physical image that we were looking for 
And then the more drafts that he gave us, the more we were like, oh, can you make it look like he's trying to escape more or put his arm over there because we can't see it, just stuff like that. And then we tried the black background, white background. We, we discussed whether we wanted the, the creature to be in a room, but then just the plain white background really made it like pop and, and stand out. And that's why we kind of landed on that. But Ben was great. Honestly, highly recommend Ben Levin, everyone. He's, he's the man. Would you say that there's some sort of like a concept connecting these artworks, these pieces together? Cause they all kind of have this similar style or is. Yeah. I mean, I I'd, I'd love to say, <laughs> I'd love to say that like, you know, we designed the EP to be a certain way. And then we designed the album to be a certain way as like a cohesive thing, but like straight up, like we just are, are the, the label that we were with was like, for promo, it's better to put out an EP before you put out the album for press. And so we found, um, we kind of like looked at uh, the 12 tracks, which it would have been 12 tracks on the album at that point. We were like, which ones would, which three would fit and have their own kind of like story outside of the album? And does the album still work outside of that? And that's honestly why we split it up. And uh, I think it works out really well because the EP, um, it's just a really good sampler of the sound and it's also slightly more aggressive. So it gives you that kind of like high energy feeling that I personally prefer in an EP. Like most of my favorite EPs are from hardcore bands instead of other bands. So I really wanted to give it that kind of like, like get in and then get out kind of thing, which I think it does really well. And then leave a lot more of the like, I mean, there's nuance in it, but uh, there's more room for nuance in the album because you understand that it's an LP and you just have more time to kind of like sit with it. Um, but yeah, it honestly started just like it's better for publicity and they were totally right. I'm, I'm really glad. I'm really glad we did it. And, and it's made me reconsider how to like release something in the future. So I'm totally going to do that again. So it sounds like you're happy with the partnership that you guys have made with Black Throne Productions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really, they're really good dudes. Yeah, it was a bit of a risk at first. Well, not re really a, a risk, I guess. But um, I mean, if you go and check out all of the uh, albums they're putting out and all of the shows that they're putting on, they uh, have a, a firm footing in Doom. Uh, so we were like, I don't really know how this is gonna work, but um, it worked out really well. I mean, I guess the key is like even if they're not really prog people, they liked the kind of prog that we were making. And that's really all that matters. Um, but yeah, they're really chill. They're really chill dudes. They got a lot of, a lot of stuff coming out this year. They also run uh, pale horse promotions, which is a great, they do a lot of really great shows in Southern Ontario. Um, and they kind of just like blew up over the past couple of years. It's almost like right after COVID, they just sort of like hit the ground running and they're, they're hustling. It's really cool to see. Really cool to see. What's your favorite song from the new album? Um, I think Tree of Teneri is my favorite one. The, mm. the, the, the closer. It's got the full package of the band, I think. It's got everything that I want someone to understand about the band. So then it was definitely a smart choice as one of the singles. Yeah, yeah. I think we were all kind of like feeling that way and when justin was uh brought into into the band like a few months ago he was like that's my favorite track too and and rob and i did a test and we sent uh like early uh early mixes of the album to like friends and colleagues and stuff and we kind of did a tally and i mean i'm happy to say that a lot of people had different answers for what their favorite song was which is good it means it's not like one-sided and you don't have duds but um the reason that we chose the uh the uh all the singles like tree of tenere nest of veins and cantiga is because like the tally was just everyone really liked those songs and we were having such a tough time choosing that it, it just made it a lot easier well and yeah. i also like Lobo i like lobotomite as an opener too i just i really wanted something like aggressive and like kind of um nauseating to start the album well and yeah with it's making the album you guys spend so much time going over the material hearing the songs a billion mm -hmm. times so it uh -huh. must be nice to have 
other people's opinions come in and tell you, okay, I think this is one of your best. I think this is one of your best. It's like, oh, okay, these are the these are the ones that we thought would be good singles. It's nice to have these other people agree with us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and and it's also nice to get the surprises too. You know, there were a couple people that were like, no, this is the one, and I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I like it within the album, but as a single, like, all right. But that's the fun of it, you know. You you never know how people are going to receive it, but that's that's all. That's part of the game. What was the most difficult section for you to record? These are good questions. I'm gonna try and, <laughs> I'm gonna try and remember what was the most difficult section. Oh, there was a part in a lot of the stuff off the EP actually, but we're not talking about the EP. We're talking about the LP. So <laughs> the toughest parts. I think a lot of. Okay, so the hardest songs are the ones that I uh, have a lot of moving parts, but I practice them like within an inch of their lives, within an inch of my life, I guess. And so recording them, I was surprised like three takes and I was done. Right. And then there were some other ones that I thought would be a lot easier and it took a long time. Like Bog Body was really hard just because the rhythm is so kind of like wacky. Like it's counting it is difficult and if you lose it for a second you have to start all over again that's why we're kind of like are we ever going to play this song live like it's so stressful to play so i think just getting through that one not even because it's physically difficult but it's our most like i don't know that's my most like thomas hockey type thing where it's like he's not going crazy but it's just kind of like the the the, the way you have to like count it and think about it right um and that took me, oh my God. Yeah. That took me, that was a, that was like a couple hours to do that one. And I was getting nervous. I was like, time is money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> Speaking of that, are you guys already hitting the ground? Like, are you working on new songs? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. We got lots of stuff. Uh, and, and now that we have Justin in the mix, um, he's been coming up with some really great stuff. Um, and we haven't really had time because we're, you know, prepping for shows and doing a lot of promo for the LP and we really want to like push it as much as possible. But I think late, even late summer, early fall, we're thinking about getting together and uh, going through all of the guitar pro tracks that we've been sending back and forth and seeing which ones really pan out and adding some details. And there's no plans on recording, but I'm sure we would probably start recording at some point next year so that everything has at least a year to kind of like sit. And we're not forcing ourselves to do it, but again, we're, it's, it's just kind of fortunate that we've all felt creative right now while this album is coming out so that it's not like, oh shit, we haven't released something in a couple of years. We better start writing. Like that's, I now feel comfortable that that's not going to happen so that hopefully some quality, more quality songs will come out of it. So I'm excited. It's good. I really liked hearing the saxophone and the trumpet on Lobotomite. Yeah. Uh, yeah do- fuck yeah. Do you think having guests come in on the next album is probably something that'll happen from time to time? Oh yeah. Rob, Rob and I were driving to our uh, Niagara release show and he was just sort of like, I want to have like a different instrument for each song. (laughs) I don't know if we'll, I don't know if we'll go that far, but like we were just listening to some jazz on the way. We were just sort of like, like kind of joking, but kind of serious. Like, Oh, how about some oboe? Like, how about some, uh, how about some of this? Like, how about some sitar? Like, how about some, uh, you know, yeah different percussive elements and it's just like the nice thing about um prog is that go make it make it happen you know absolutely yeah and you guys have been getting lots of positive reviews over this Mm -hmm. Uh, uh how does it feel to see all of the the feedback coming back to you and it being so positive oh validating as hell i'm not gonna lie (laughs) so validating feels great (laughs) <laughs> and I, like it's it's kind of it's kind of weird because i don't know i i made this joke i can't remember who i made this joke to i think it was tyson this guy named tyson blast he does a lot of um he does a lot of shows in windsor he's in great bands trench lung and and heavy breather he's like an amazing drummer he's been doing it for a long time and we were both talking about how our bands are kind of tough to fit on a bill 
because like we hit a lot of like different genres which like we love that's why we write the music but like with a lot of local shows it's kind of tough to, like there's there are death metal shows there are hardcore shows and like theoretically there would be prog shows but like there aren't really there are a few prog bands but um you don't really see a lot of them happening and it's not a huge draw so it's a little bit tough so anyway the joke i was making was like you're you're either like an independent prog band playing to your mom and dad or you're like <laughs> dream theater you know like yeah there's no there's no in between <laughs> um so in that sense it's been a little bit uh i mean it's nice to play in front of a bunch of uh, different crowds but it's been slow going in terms of like getting us on some bills so uh i'm 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 hoping that the album kind of like gets the name out there a little bit more and we can we can play we can play some different shows maybe open open for some more touring bands which is really great as a local you know that's great to kind of like get in front of a new audience or an audience that would typically like your music that might not find you in the city in the scene that was something I was actually wanting to get to is about the Toronto mm -hmm. scene and what it was like there because, you know, I've never been to Toronto and I, I just go on mm -hmm. like band camp and I see all these different bands coming out of Toronto, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going around playing shows. And even if they mm -hmm. do play a show, it doesn't necessarily mean that anyone's going to come to it, even though they're in a big city. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> but the, yeah. Uh, there is quite a few instrumental progressive bands in Toronto. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any that have really caught your attention? Devouring Saturn is a really great band, but like, I don't think they play shows. Like there's a lot of these bands that uh, I feel like are more recording artists. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've only put together a couple of shows in Toronto barely, and that's still been with the help of a uh, season promoter. So in terms of a lot of local prog, I just, I mean, maybe I don't know where to look, which is a, a bad sign. I probably should, but I, I'm not seeing as much as a lot of other genres, such as like, like hardcore is, is blowing up in Southern Ontario and there's tons of great bands. We're at, we've got a huge fest. What's that fest called in September? It happened last year and uh, I, I can't remember, but anyway, they, they got some pretty, like they've got judiciary and harm's way coming up and uh, the Niagara scene is huge. Like reality denied is blowing up. Like that scene is awesome. And I'm just like, oh, I'd love to play those shows, but it just doesn't make enough sense. You know? Right. Yeah. Like we are playing with a bunch of hardcore bands in Windsor and I'm just like, I'm, I'm really grateful for it because the, the kids are really going to come out. But I don't know how we're going to go over. Like, maybe they might be like, oh, I really wish I could mosh. Or maybe they'll appreciate the, like, I don't know how I'd put it, like the reprieve. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. Like, we'll see how it goes. But um, that's the nice thing about being prog with, like, some more breakdowns, I guess, if if, if you really want to put it that way, is that it, it, it has that kind of appeal. So we'll see. Is there any advice that you would give to an aspiring musician? Man. <laughs> I like how that just immediately made you crack up. <laughs> Man, don't. Uh, that's my advice. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, it would probably be something to do with, I mean, oh God, it's, it's important to practice your instrument. I mean, there's lots of like basic advice that you'd get from a lot of people, but I think if you're an aspiring musician, instead of an aspiring someone who wants to learn an instrument, like those are two different things. I think you have to really listen to your gut in terms of what you're writing and who you're writing it with because you can get really excited about putting something out and then i mean i kind of we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier but like you don't you don't want to be like two years down the line and just be like oh god i'm so 
embarrassed by this output suddenly that I was just so excited to put out there. Or I just kind of like jumped into bed with someone that uh, also wanted to just like start a band and we just started a band and I fucking hate this person. And now we're in like a rights disagreement or I mean, I don't know, something like that. You really got it. But that's my advice to like anyone that's making art is like the whole thing is your gut. So you have to practice listening to your gut and uh, actually listen to it instead of ignoring it. Good words of advice from somebody who knows everyone. So is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners? Um, thank you for listening. Uh, our new album, Nest of Veins, is streaming everywhere. Um, go check it out on Spotify. You could also buy it on Bandcamp. Um, we're going to be trying to hit Quebec and the east coast of Canada in the fall. We're going to be playing a lot more Southern Ontario shows um we're gonna be getting so we have lots of merch we are gonna f be setting up like a shipping situation soon but again we've all got full-time jobs and we're all busy but we're gonna figure it out um but yeah thanks for listening and uh keep listening absolutely and is yeah. there anyone you need to give a shout out to uh I'll <laughs> shout out some bands some really great bands um I'm going to shout out Heavy Breather and Trench Lung again, just because Tyson, uh, uh, that was the first ever show that we played was in Windsor and he gave us a chance and he's a really great dude. Um, and he's doing a lot for the Windsor scene. I don't even know where that scene would be without him. Um, so check out his bands, Trench Lung and Heavy Breather. I would also check out Hound Skull. They really, um, put in a good word, um, with other Toronto promoters when we were first playing shows and uh, we owe a lot to them. And they're, a re they're a really cool. Like they've got a lot of classic metal and a little bit of doom elements, some prog, really cool vocals. They fucking shred. They're so cool. I would check them out. Um, uh, that's it off the top of my head. So shout out to those homies. Shout out. Yeah. Everyone, you've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Spencer Robson from the band Jow Die. Their new album, Nest of Veins, is out now, so go check it out. Spencer, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and take care of yourself. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. This is great.